He has done so much to educate the public about nuclear energy, about common sense clean energy policies, ones that are actually going to work, not just run up big debts for the American people. He's our good friend, Rich Powell from Clear Path, the chief executive officer there, and he joins us now. Rich, welcome back to the show. Thanks so much for having me, John. Great to see you and, and Amanda, too. Thanks so much for your coverage of this. Well, this is important. This is a major moment, a milestone, something a decade or more in the, uh, in the making. Georgia Power launching the Vogel Plant Unit 3, a new nuclear reactor. How big a moment is it, and does it portend maybe a larger move towards nuclear in the next few years? This, this can't be understated. This is an enormous moment for clean energy in this country. It's an enormous moment for nuclear energy in this country. The Vogel reactor is the first made from scratch reactor we're bringing online in the U.S. in more than 30 years. Wow. And it's been a long journey to get here for all the reasons you mentioned earlier. It's a massive construction project. It's a huge achievement, but it really puts the United States back in the advanced nuclear business. And when its sister reactor comes online, Vogel 4, this will be the largest source of electricity, full stop, in the country. It will also obviously be the largest source of clean electricity in the country. One of the largest clean power plants in the entire world. Wow. That's impressive. That's amazing. And, and I hope this is just the beginning because John and I often talk about Democrats and their propensity to put the cart before the horse with things like the Green New Deal and the efforts to get rid of our gas stoves, gas water heaters, pizza ovens. And I think when Americans are presented with an alternative to that, that being nuclear energy, uh, according to Scott Rasmussen and his national survey, 63% of Americans favor more nuclear energy, doubling nuclear energy over the next decade. Nuclear is really on an upswing. It's really on a resurgence. You know, unfortunately, there's nothing like a global energy crisis to make nuclear look good, to make everyone realize all the value of this. But just as a reminder, it's a source of electricity that can run 24-7, 365 through all kinds of weather that's not reliant on uh, either fuel that we import from abroad or intermittent uh, wind or, or solar. Uh, it's something that can be done very affordably when we do it right and when we do it repeatedly. And it's clean. It's zero emission. It produces no carbon dioxide or other greenhouse gases. There are countries that have gone much further with nuclear than we have. France, for example, uh, and have shown that this can power an even larger portion of the grid. And it's already right. the most important source of clean electricity generation in the U.S. So now the key is how do we find the advanced designs that don't take us a decade to build that can be built much more quickly at much less risk to the companies that are building them, but that can still provide all these great benefits of clean, reliable, affordable, 24-7, you know, secure, independent electricity. Every time you and I talk about this, Rich, there's a very important issue, one I don't think the Biden administration has gotten right yet, and that is permitting. If the permitting process could simply be streamlined, we could bring on lots more electricity load. We might be able to actually power those electric cars someday soon. Why is the permitting process so bogged down and why can't common sense people come together and just say, let's just fix this? Yeah, well, the thing to remember in the US is that our energy system is very heavily regulated. So uh, any kind of power plant in the country starts with a permit to build. And nuclear energy, for a variety of reasons, is the most heavily regulated of all those parts. Part of that makes a lot of sense, right? We, we need, this is a, a technology with risk. And so we need to have uh, reasonable safety regulations on these reactors. And in the case of nuclear, unlike a lot of other things, like the Food and Drug Administration or the Federal Aviation Administration, where we balance risk and opportunity in the technology, in nuclear, unfortunately, we often only think about the risk. And that has the potential to strangle the new advanced reactor designs coming out. This Nuclear Regulatory Commission hasn't yet licensed any advanced reactor designs under the processes they currently have. Wow. There's a big coalition in Congress to modernize and reform that. It's actually quite a bipartisan coalition. We, we actually have a lot of friends on the left who are coming along and pressing yes. for this, but we need to modernize the NRC if we're going to have the next generation of advanced nuclear designs ready to go for, for when the country needs them. That's so important. Rich, there is an indubitable tie between nuclear energy and national security, and we are seeing more areas, more 
uh, sectors of society where we are vulnerable to nations like China, whether it's you know mining rare earth minerals, pharmaceuticals, technology. And this is one of those ways that we can bolster our own energy in a very clean way and, and decrease that vulnerability and that susceptibility to, to China's whims. How do we get more Americans on board? Well, first, I think by, by helping more people understand what you just said, Amanda, which is that there's a huge link between this industry. It's, it, it, these, are, these are related but separate technologies, you know, the things that, that power our nuclear weapons and that power our, our aircraft carriers and our submarines and what we do in power plants. Um, so there's a very different risk profile, but the one helps the other. A thriving civilian power plant nuclear sector really helps us maintain that all-important defense nuclear apparatus, whether that's the weapons program or the, the Navy propulsion program in our carriers and our subs. And I have to tell you that the Chinese very much realize this. And so the party has prioritized getting ahead in both existing and advanced nuclear technologies as a real challenge to America's control of this technology globally. Russia, after its savage invasion of the Ukraine, was the primary country building new nuclear plants abroad. Many countries have obviously reconsidered that. They don't, they don't like the look of Ukraine and getting dependent on Russian energy sources, and so they're pulling back. But China is rushing to go in and fill that vacuum. And so the U.S. has designs. We have champion countries. We have finances available to push back on that, but we need to move quickly so that we're the ones filling that vacuum that's being left by Russia. That's such an important strategic posture we have to gain in the world right now. Uh, Rich, we got a little over a minute left. Uh, put your crystal ball on the table for a second. Where are we going to see the next new nuclear power plants? Where is the, the most momentum right now? Uh, well, uh, unfortunately, the very next one we'll see uh, after the second one built in Georgia is going to be up at our friends in Canada. So right. Ontario has right. committed to building uh, one of GE's designs. Uh, the Tennessee Valley Authority will come quickly after that building in the U.S. We'll also have advanced designs like the TerraPower Reactor built out in Wyoming. Right. Uh, and Texas is going to build an X-Energy high temperature reactor down at a Dow chemical site in Texas to make clean chemicals. So wow. I think uh, it, it won't be any one. It'll actually be maybe a dozen this decade that we'll see constructed around the country. It's really exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like there may be a collision course ahead of us, all of us. But nuclear power can solve a lot of that problem. That's why it's so important. <laughs> That's Rich, right. we love having you on. You make sense of this, and I think a lot of people are starting to become educated about the path that you've been putting us on. Great to have you on. Have a great weekend, my friend. Hey, thanks so much. Thanks so much for covering this. Yeah, it's an important issue. All right, folks, we're going to take a quick commercial break.